good to be in the house of the Lord together, each and every one of you this morning. And just have a few announcements before we get going. If you guys opened your bulletin today, what is this I see here? Wayside Youth Royally Baked Pepperoni Roll Sale is starting. So there's some uh, good information there. Uh, sign up, order some delicious pepperoni rolls. Uh, we have a lot, lot of options, it looks like. Um, I think these are more options than we've ever had before. Is that correct, DJ? All right. We'll get those orders in, and the youth will be excited for your support, and you will be excited to try these pepperoni rolls. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the Good Samaritan Center is still collecting for this month the cake icings, and then next month, they'll start collecting cereal. If anybody knows Pastor Jeremy, they know that Pastor Jeremy loves breakfast cereal. So I might have some special special uh, treats for you, especially with me when it comes to shoe wear during the month of September. So for those that follow my love of Crocs, you won't be surprised, but we'll see. Keep, a, keep those things in mind when you go shopping. Also, if you guys noticed, the little school bus out in the crossing was so full of school supplies, and we've not even technically started the month of September yet. So we had to move some of those items aside so that we can keep collecting more school items. So keep, keep bringing those in throughout the month of September. Uh, we'll have a time of, of celebrating that at the end of the month uh, with a blessing of those items as we go forward and distribute those to the local school. Uh, the church, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. We 
So in this story, Jesus wanted to tell people, don't choose the seat that you think will get you a better invitation to another party and to be considered a little above other people, more fancier than they really were. So this was a little test that we had with to see if we could get out of our comfort zone and maybe watch where we seat, seat ourselves. A couch, yeah, we're just holding a couch in here, huh? No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> All right, you want to help me say a prayer? No, I don't even do that. Okay, well, let's ask them to put their hands together, okay? All right, let us pray. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you. We thank you. For your wise words. For your wise words. And instructions. And instructions. Keep us humble. Keep us humble. And keep showing your love through us. And keep showing your love through us. And help us. And help us. Show others Jesus' love. Show others Jesus' love. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, Wesley, before we go, there's something we get to do. <laughs> Those baskets over there. Yeah, let's go get some pennies for missions. And hopefully that we'll know where they're sitting at, even though they're in different spots today. You take one and I'll take one. It, looks like a hat. it does look like a hat. <laughs> Delivered 
this week. Right. <laughs> After ordering it on July the 6th. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> Watch them delivered and tested, I'm sure, right? <laughs> All right, amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Any other joys this morning? All right. Any concerns that we have? We want to continue to remember Merle in our prayers. Um, also, Betty asked me to share, Betty Perkins, that uh, she's having a surgery uh, on October 4th in Morgantown to have a cyst removed. Uh, in her left ear. It'll be about a six to ten hour surgery. Uh, we do want to keep her in our prayers and then as she stated this morning, she will uh, lose all hearing in her left ear. So today we do want to lift you up today, um, not only today, but leading up to this procedure and, and during the week um, of that procedure. It's a lot to go through. We want to uh, surround you in our prayers uh, today and going forward. So do remember that. Uh, my son-in-law has uh, just received a cancer diagnosis, so we'll be, um, you know, looking forward to the treatment that, that he'll receive. All right. Remember Kathy's son-in-law with cancer treatment coming up. We did have one son, and he left yesterday for a 10-day retreat in the middle of the Arizona desert. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he calls me every day to check on me. And for 10 days, I will not hear from him because there is no cell phone service. So you can imagine how the devil is playing with my mm -hmm. mind about all the things out there that could happen to him. Right. So pray for Sam Bollier. Pray for Sam and for you as well, yes. <laughs> uh, keep your prayers uh, going for Jim, Jim Woody. Mm -hmm. um, we're nearing the end of the road, um, with his time here on this earth, and just pray for his peace and comfort and his family and friends. Continue to remember Jim Woody. Any uh, others this morning? Uh, Jane Piper is having some health concerns. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue to remember Jim in our prayers and with her health concerns. And upcoming procedures, do remember her. You can remember my family this morning. I hadn't planned on being here this morning. <laughs> yes, I hadn't planned on being here. <laughs> and I got to listen to the country music, not country, well, I listen to that music too, but um, Christian music this morning and just something inside me and I was like, I need to go to Wayside Church. <laughs> and um, of course, I just like, I don't care what I'm wearing. <laughs> Threw on the clothes and you know, a tiny bit of makeup, so I didn't scare y'all. And um, so I drove here, and I know God wanted me to be here because I got every single green light all the way from the Amen. 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 I mean, all up Grand Central. Every light was green. And I'm like, see, I knew I was making the right decision. That's right. So it, it, it's, it's been a good week. It, the hard part's now beginning because all the busyness of this first you know, few days are over. So the, yesterday and today, it's just been, you know, call my mom every single day. Mm -hmm. So weird not to call between five and seven every evening. And um, but she had a testimony she lived too. And of course we just lost my uncle five weeks ago. So it's been a hard summer for the Bumgarten family. Mm -hmm. And but two beautiful souls, I tell ya. And Ward County is a very special place, just the outpouring of love words, sentiments of what my mom meant to that county. And and um, she was delivering um, to the recovery center out there in her car. When I cleaned out, I was like, what's all this? I mean, paper towels, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, hand soap, tissues. And I gathered it up in this, I mean, the box couldn't hold it all. all that, and I'm like, what? And um, so uh, she still made that 
that's, I got that delivered to the recovery center. So even after her death, she was still giving. So um, just, um, she lived, she lived a life that God wants us to live while we're here on this earth. And then at her funeral, it was a very, very good send off. She would have been proud. So, um, but thank you for being here for me this morning. It feels good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. And continue to remember you and your family as well as you all celebrate your mother's past. Any others this morning? Any unspoken concerns that are on our hearts? The Lord knows each and every one of them. Let us take time now to go to God in prayer, shall we? Gracious God, we humbly come before you, praising you, giving you thanks, singing these songs that uplift your name this day, for giving us a chance, for giving us life through Jesus Christ, for giving us a safe place to gather, to come and to worship, to give you thanks. Lord, for those that were able to join us in our service today, for pews full of friends and neighbors and family alike, for Michael's aunt being able to come home from the hospital and the joy of celebrating the two new additions to her home, and for dishwashers being delivered, Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, also we come with those joys that are on our hearts this day. You know each and every one of them, much like these concerns that we carry, these burdens that we bring before you this day. Lord, we ask that you be with Kathy in the upcoming surgery, that you be with uh, the stun of all and the, the cancer diagnosis, Lord, that you go before him, that you go before with the doctors and the nurses and those that, that will be offering the upcoming care, and be with the family giving them peace, giving them your presence in their lives. Lord, we give them to you this day. Lord, for Sam, as he travels for these 10 days up ahead, Lord, be not only with him and those that he's with, but be back here with thee and those that wait to hear, those that will be lifting him up in prayer during this time. We uplift Merle, we uplift Jim Woody, we uplift Jan Kiger and those in our prayers that are amongst us in this congregation and in this community. Their needs may be different, but their God is the same. And we come to you asking now to touch their lives, to be with them in their time of need. As you walk alongside us, we know too that you walk alongside them. And for Betty and her upcoming procedure, while it is weeks away, we know that, that what comes with that is the worry, the concerns. But Lord, we know that you are there with her each and every day. And we ask that your presence again be with them and those that will be performing the upcoming surgery. And that you will give her peace. And that you too will walk alongside her in her time of need. Lord, for the joy of Shelly being here with us this morning, we give you thanks for her and her family's testimony over the years. And while those celebrations have come quite close together, Lord, we give you thanks for the lives that have helped her along her journey, that shine through her to this day, that same love and care, that same witness of Jesus Christ in their lives still reflects through hers today. So Lord, we also uplift her to you in this time of mourning, in this time of loss. Again, may your love be ever present in her life. Lord, at this time, we also lift up my daughter Charlotte, who's still recovering from her wisdom teeth removal. We just ask that you continue to be with her, help her heal, help her follow her regimen of medicines and all the aftercare. Lord, also be with each and every one of us this morning. 
those that are here in the sanctuary, those that may be out in the parking lot, and those watching from home or traveling, wherever they may be. May you bless us and use us in ways that help make Wayside a difference, not only in this building, but in this community and in this state, in this country and in this world. So Lord, again, we come before you, give you thanks and praise, and also we come as the body of Christ, joining together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples long ago when he taught them to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
lesson lesson today is from Jeremiah 2, 4 through 13. Listen to the Lord's word, people of Judah, all you families of the Israelite household. This is what the Lord says. What wrong did your ancestors find in me that made them wander so far? They pursued what was worthless and became worthless. They didn't ask, Where the Lord, where's the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, in a land of deserts and ravines, in a land of drought and darkness? in a land of no return, where no one survives. I brought you into a land of plenty to enjoy its gifts and goodness, but you ruined my land. You disgraced my heritage. The priest didn't ask, where's the Lord? Those responsible for the instructions didn't know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophet spoke in the name of Baal, going after what has no value. That is why I will take you to court and charge even your descendants, declares the Lord. Look to the west as far as the shores of Cyprus, and to the east as far as the land of Kedar. Ask anyone there, has anyone this has anything this odd ever taken place? Has a nation switched gods, though they aren't really gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glory for what has no value. Be stunned at such a thing, you heavens. Shudder and quake, declares the Lord. My people have committed two crimes. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they have dug wells, broken wells, that can't hold water. And then the New Testament lesson is Hebrews, Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, 15, 16. Keep loving each other like family. Don't neglect to open up your homes to guests. Because by doing this, some have been opposed to angels without knowing it. Remember prisoners as if you were in prison with them, and people who are mistreated as if you were in their place. Marriage must be honored in every respect with no cheating on the relationship, because God will judge the sexually immoral person and the person who commits adultery. Your way of in the love of money, and you should be content with what you have. After all, he has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. This is why we can come this is what we can confidently say. The Lord is my helper, and I won't be afraid. What can people do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's words to you. Imitate their faith as you consider the way their lives turned out. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, Stand if you're able to hear the reading of today's gospel lesson. This comes from Luke chapter 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to share a meal in the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees, they were watching him closely. And when Jesus noticed how the guests sought out the best seats at the table, he told them a parable. When someone invites you to a wedding celebration, don't take your seat in the place of honor. Someone more highly regarded than you could have been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you will come and say to you, 
Give your seat to this other person. Embarrassed, you will take your seat in the least important place. Instead, when you receive an invitation, go and sit in the least important place. When your host approaches you, he will say, Friend, move up here to a better seat. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. Then Jesus said to the person who had invited him, When you host a lunch or dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives or rich neighbors. If you do, they will invite you in return, and that will be your reward. Instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, crippled, lame, and blind, and you will be blessed because they can't repay you. Instead, you will be repaid when the just are resurrected. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And get me behind the cross so that your glory and not mine might shine through. And in spite of the stammering of my speech and the inconsistencies of my character, May your word be proclaimed and heard here today. Amen. Amen. Let me start off today by telling you that Redek decided we would challenge the next Methodist church down the road, which is the St. John United Methodist Church, similar to here at Wayside, to a challenge of a three-month-long kickball tournament. So we were not the host. We had three vehicles worth of, of kids and adults that were ready to play. We get there. They had two kids is all they had at about 6.45. So we thought, this is going to be easy. Just numbers alone, we are going to dominate this team. <laughs> well, we were a young youth group. We... Had a lot of homeschool kids in our group that were, were there as the high, high school kids, but then all the other kids were what I call as COVID kids, those that had joined the youth group in those two years. So we had a lot of fifth graders moving up to six. We had a lot of sixth graders moving up to seven. And in two minutes until this kickball game is scheduled to go off, here comes about 25 of the most athletic kids I have ever seen in the youth group activity. <laughs> It was so bad that we had to force them to merge teams so that my kids would stop being distraught and, and down and out and try to help uh, boost the morale. But it was so bad that when the second game was scheduled, they no-showed on us because they were that bored with us, I guess. <laughs> well, I say all of that to say is that we thought we had it all. We thought we were going to just come in there and, and just do our best and, and, and win, win the tournament, and we were humbled very, very quickly. Now, while that doesn't have anything to do with the wedding feast, like Jesus says, but that is, um, it touches on verse 14, 11, where it says, all who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. So, we were brought, <laughs> brought low pretty quickly. We were overconfident as a, as a group. But looking at today's text, I want us to point out a couple things here. The first thing is, is that Jesus takes notice. Today's reading starts off once again by letting us know that Jesus is being watched by those that are around him. As his journey to Jerusalem continues, it's as if they're looking specifically for any reason to arrest him and put an end to his teachings, to his miracles, and more importantly, to those who were following him. And also, once again, in Luke's Gospel, we see Jesus around a table near food, where he'll once again teach those in attendance some valuable lessons. Jesus using food and time is gathered around the table. Sounds like a good old Methodist to me. But Jesus notices how those at the meal were acting. So he addressed both those in attendance as guests, and also gave some wise warnings to those who would be hosts. So to those who were there picking their seat closest to the host, next to the host was considered a place of honor. This wasn't the first time Jesus had, had to go over these instructions about people picking James and John. It wasn't even actually James and John for a similar position. 
In Matthew 20, verses 20 to 21, it said, Then the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus along with her sons, bowing before him. She asked a favor of him. What do you want, he asked. And she responded, Say that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. First of all, I just want to say, how embarrassing does this story sound in today's context that your mom has to go to Jesus and ask for a special favor? Like, can my son's pretty please sit next to you in the kingdom? Sounds a little uh, iffy to me. Nothing like this ever happens if you're a coach in rec league or travel ball, so. <laughs> but I digress. What's really important here is the way in which Jesus knew that he was being watched. Yet he turned it around and did some watching of his own. You see, much like these last few weeks that we've been following Jesus' path, he's been using his time wisely to teach, to point out the hypocritical. So he asked them to watch your seed. As I mentioned before with the kickball incident of 2020, that feel that healing will never come. But what the text is pointing to us is for us to treat everyone equally. Everyone with the same level of love and care that's to be given as if they are closest to us. Now remember, this was well before the time and the drama of Facebook family feuds. So family was a, an important aspect back then, and Jesus knew about that. This theme will also continue in today's gospel te text that we're talking about. But Jesus points us in a direction, and he asks us to ask an important question of who's who. Who's being invited to the parties? Who is on the guest list that you may have? You see, Jesus takes notice of who, he, who we are inviting into our lives and looks at the motives that we may have in inviting them. And even goes to warn us about inviting those that can repay the favor is doing that for selfish motives. But instead, he wants us to focus on inviting those that can't pay us back. He advises us how we should be reaching out to those in the margins. In Luke 14, 12 through 13, it said, Then Jesus said to the person who had invited him, When you host a lunch or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, or rich neighbors. If you do, they will invite you in return and they will be your reward. Instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. You see, if we stop and take a look at who's at our table, that'll tell us where our heart truly is. Now, while we have been in a state of total panic for the past two and a half years, we've been told that we can only invite those who are in our immediate family, who are in our homes, who are in close proximity to us, on a daily basis to be invited to our tables. We've lost a bit of that community feeling, that outreach, that purpose, especially as the church, but also as individuals. So as we begin to look forward into a new time where we can safely get back to doing some of those things that we once did before, we need to reevaluate our guest list a little bit and ask ourselves, why do we do the things we did before that we haven't been able to do in a while. When we have church potlucks and dinners, were we primarily just inviting ourselves, just those already connected to the church, or were we making these events available to, as Jesus says, the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind? And as we reevaluate ourselves and whom we invite around the tables, we also have to reevaluate our actual tables and spaces in which we're meeting in. Do we have the proper means to be able to host such events? You know, our hope over the last few weeks has been talking about bringing back a, a tradition, a Thanksgiving meal here at Wayside. And church, we have to ask ourselves, do we have the proper capability, such as enough people to work, enough items to, to host it? Do we have the proper hot water tank to be able to clean those dishes afterwards. Things that we're waiting to hear back on and whether we can effectively serve our community. So as we begin to think, what are some other ways we can begin to do outreach 
now that we've safely come back into the sanctuary, now that we've safely been able to, to gather around, and a couple of weeks ago we had hot dogs and a crossing uh, due to a rainstorm, but we were able to eat together and to welcome the community. Are there other ways in which we can safely do that? See, church, my prayer is that we can begin to look at ways to not only continue to safely gather and enjoy fellowship together, but to also start to look at who it is we are offering these meals to. If it's just for us, then that's all that will be here in the future is us. If it's for all, then that's where we'll start to see our community change. We'll start to see a difference in those around us. We'll start to see relationships form. We'll start to see God work through His Holy Spirit in the lives of those that aren't here yet. Church, the table is where relationship happens. Christ himself used this table for teachings, for inviting, for realization to take place in the minds of those he sat with, of those who may have been misguided and confused about where they stood, about where they wanted to be in life and in society with their social status. And those who wanted to be seated with those of higher importance. Now it's not something that will happen overnight, but we need to reevaluate the table situation and encourage others to think and rethink as well. See, Jesus ends this week's text by reminding them of, a ble of a, the blessing that they are. Luke 14, 14 says, And you will be blessed because they can't repay you. See, I served under a great pastor when I first came to Forest for Death seven years ago. And for those four years, I served under a former district superintendent, Ellis Conley. And he had a saying that we would eventually make into a t-shirt for him on his final year there with us. That we were blessed to be a blessing. And he reminded us as a congregation that we were, in fact, blessed for a purpose. We were blessed not to just keep that blessing to ourselves and feel all warm and snugly in our own homes, in our own church. To sit around with closed doors and enjoy the blessings just for us. No, no. He reminded us that we were blessed and we needed to pass on that blessing on to others. Church, we are blessed to be a blessing here as well. Blessed by the grace of God so that others might find it too. And when we think about this table, I can't help but think of a conversation that was had during my take-in back in March when I met some folks from both here at Wayside and at Sand Hill. They talked about having a joint meal together and how exciting that might be, especially coming out of two and a half years of madness. A meal together, church can expand our fellowship in many ways. I'll be honest with you, I've been a part of churches before that were put together as a new charge, and I know that that, that is not always an easy thing to take place. So we have to look at the huge positives that come with being in charge. Church, our table is now bigger. Our table is now bigger. That means our outreach is more. Our capabilities are more. Everything has expanded when we work together. Working together for the kingdom of God now has the ability to bless more people. Again, church, I'll say it. We've been blessed to be a blessing. And next week when we come to the table, the Lord's table, let us remember that we are in fact blessed. Our table has gotten bigger. We've got more chairs for more people to come and join us. And just like Jesus suggests, to send out that invitation to the poor, to the crippled, to the lame, to the blind. To all of God's people. Because they are all invited to his table as well. Yes, After all, it's not our table to begin with. It all belongs to God. And speaking of that word all, one of my favorite words in the Bible. In two weeks, we're actually going to be starting a new sermon series called Paul's Alls. We'll look at the words that Paul wrote to his friend Timothy. And he happens to use the word all in all of those, so stay tuned to that. But remember, all are welcome at God's table, and all are welcome to ours here as well. Let us pray. Merciful God, we find it hard to see in ourselves the trappings our society so admires and serves. 
whether it be power, wealth, or access that forget mutual love. We fail to see our allegiance to these dangerous gods, rushing from places of honor, scorning the humble and lowly, and supporting systems that survive on greed and abuse. Lord, forgive us when we are fearful that there is not enough. Remind us that you are enough. Teach us your generosity. Teach us your world-changing humility. And teach us your expansive love. Transform us and heal our lives. And in your name, we give you thanks this day. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us in our closing hymn of invitation. Number 340.